All right, let's go to our uh, N NBA power ranking segment. Let's still get this back on track on Fridays. We haven't done one in about a couple of weeks because of the All-Star break, and then they resumed play on Wednesday, but only two teams played on, or four teams played on Wednesday, and then a lot of teams played on Thursday, but there were some teams that still haven't played by that Friday, so we didn't want to do a power rankings there. So with all that being said, we are taking whatever has happened from the All-Star break up until this point. That's our new power rankings based on you know what we've already had going up into that. That, uh, uh, all-star break. Alrighty, so here we go. Um, this is at halftime. Can I change this real quick? Uh, let's see. Live March Madness. Got to keep all the games on. Trying to get it to our uh, Colgate pick. That is Drexel, Illinois. All right, that's not Colgate. I'm looking for this big old Colgate upset, folks. We love Colgate. We just got them plus eight, eight points, and uh, they're winning currently. All right, so here we go. All right, we got it on. Commercial currently. We'll, we'll tell you the, uh, the score in a second. But back to our power rankings here. We got uh, heading into the All-Star break. The power rankings were Mavericks at 10, Celtics at 9, Blazers at 8, Heat at 7, Bucks at 6, Nuggets at 5, Jazz at 4, 76ers at 3, Suns at 2, and Nets at 1. Alrighty, now we only have one team. We're only kicking one team out of the power rankings that's currently in the power rankings, so we will bring in one new team. But the team we are going to kick out is the Boston Celtics. Yes, they got Marcus Smart back, but they have not been able to kind of figure out the rotations with him coming back off that injury yet because since the All-Star break, they went 1-3. and three. They beat the Rockets, which isn't even a win, folks. They're barely having eight players play on a nightly basis. Everybody's out. They're trying to trade some of their players. They are not a winning team right now. They're not even thinking about winning. That team, that organization, nobody in that locker room is thinking about winning a game. So, I mean, their one win's really not even a win. And then they lose against the Nets, the Jazz, and the Cavs. Now, the Nets and the Jazz are very good teams, but, I mean, the Celtics, I mean, folks, they're in the East. It's an easier conference. They got superstars, but they need to figure out how to start beating some of these better teams. And until they do so, we got to take them out of their power rankings. So the Celtics are currently the only team that is in the power rankings, not going to be in the power rankings uh, when we're done with the updated power rankings. So Celtics... Man, oh man, get it back on track, man. You got Marcus Smart back. Get him back into the the, the number two position, wherever you're going to play him. But um, you got to start figuring something out here. So Celtics are out. Um, all right, so let's uh, go 10-1 and reveal our new updated power rankings. So here we go. Um, all righty, new number 10 team is going to be the Blazers. So they do drop down a little bit, and I don't want to fully take them out of the top 10. They are very close of going out of the top 10, but we won't move them out just quite yet. And here it is. Colgate is leading 27-19 to 19 with six minutes left in the first quarter, or the first half here. Colgate, yes, sir. All righty, so Blazers at number 10. Since the All-Star break, they have gone 3-2. and two. They've beaten the Timberwolves and the Pelicans twice. Once again, not great wins. All right, win. Below average wins, I would say. All right, and then their two losses are against the Suns and the Timberwolves. So they split their meeting against the Timberwolves, but then, but then they lose to the Suns. It was a close game, but uh, we'll move the Blazers down from 8 to 10 here. They just got C.J. McCollum back, trying to work him back into the starting lineup. Gary Trent Jr., we just saw, is kind of struggling kind of with his production off the bench, being the number two in the starting lineup for so long with McCollum out. Now McCollum comes back, so we're going to give the, the Blazers a little bit of a benefit of the doubt with those two losses since the All-Star break. Let's see C.J. McCollum get acclimated back into this lineup. Let's see Gary Trent Jr. start, you know, getting it done off the bench. I mean, he's got to put up 10-plus points every single night, him and Carmelo off the bench. Uh, so, Blazers at 10. Like what they're doing. Not great wins. Below decent wins. But um, don't want to fully take them out yet uh, just because, you know, C.J. McCollum. Don't want to really have that to kind of ruin them. Just kind of a, their player back in the rotation trying to get everything acclimated. And is that another three by Colgate? Yes, sir. They're up 33-19. Respect Colgate! Yes, sir. The 14th seed. Fantastic. And now they're going to go on a fast break here. Here we go. Let's see. They're going to cash out another three. They drive. They pass out the three. Wide open three again. 
Oh, they missed it this time. Darn it. All right. Well, let's get back to this. We'll we'll shut this off for a little bit. But um, Blazers at 10. All righty. Uh, nine. We told you the Celtics are out of the top 10, so let's get them out. And this is the new team in the top 10 now. Got to give respect to the Lakers. Yes, sir. I mean... Folks, 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 without Anthony Davis, they're still consistent, folks. I mean, LeBron James will get it done. LeBron James will will everybody to having good games, and that's what we've been seeing lately. So since the All-Star break, Lakers are 4-0, absolutely magnificent. They beat the Pacers, the Warriors, the Timberwolves, and the Hornets. Now, decent teams here. Pacers are kind of, you know, below average. You know, just kind of, no, they're kind of average. They are the most average team in the league, honestly. Uh, so the Pacers, I think that was the game before Karis LeVert got, um, got uh, cleared to play again. Um, so a solid win there. Warriors, you know, up and coming. They blow them out. You know, they kind of make Steph Curry go crazy in that game. Timberwolves, once again, not a great win, but that Hornets win. They are up and coming, and I do like what they have. But uh, very nice wins here for the Lakers. Once again, we're not going to penalize you for winning games you're supposed to win. Uh, so they go 4-0 since the All-Star break. LeBron James still getting it done consistently. He's back to hitting threes decently now. I mean, that month of February, holy moly, like 1 of 5, 1 of 10, like 1 of 6, 1 of 7 from 3 on a nightly basis. They weren't getting it done, but now he's hitting, you know, 3-4 a game. That's what we're talking about. So LeBron's getting a little bit better here um, since the All-Star break. Other players are kind of filling it in a little, filling it in a little bit. Montrezl Harrell has been absolutely phenomenal. I don't like that he's not starting. I want to see that man start with Anthony Davis not in the starting lineup um, so they're winning without Anthony Davis they're winning without one of their best players that they have and I got to respect the heck out of that so Lakers welcome back into the top 10 here at number nine Alrighty, new number three team, and this is no fault of their own, Unfor well, kind of, but uh, the Heat are unfortunately going to have to move back a spot, even though they have been playing very well. Now, so here we go, Heat moved back from seven to eight here. They have gone four and one since the All-Star break, and I know you guys are probably like, well, why are they moving back? It's just they're kind of what their opponents that they're beating and what other teams are doing. So unfortunate here. They beat the Magic, the Bulls, the Magic again, and the Cavs. And then they lose to the Grizzlies. I mean, come on. You can't lose to the Grizzlies. I mean, Grizzlies have been really shaky. You know, 500, and then below five, a game below 500, then a game above 500, then two games below 500, then 500 again. I mean, they're very up and down team. Um, and then the Bulls, the Magic, and the Cavs. I mean, that's not really great talent. The Magic, I mean, you know, Aaron Gordon is just trying to start getting back into the, some of these games here. Um... The Cavs, I mean, ever since they elevated, the, you know, or ever since they got Larry Nance Jr. and Kevin Love back, the offense has been absolutely sputtering. Um, and then the Bulls, I mean, is Zach Levine's good, but we really can't trust Kobe White. And then besides them, who else do they really have besides Thaddeus Young, sixth man of the year candidate, um, who got elevated to the starting lineup. So fantastic there. But overall, not really great teams, below average teams, I would say. So he, yes, good job for winning those games. Um, we're not penal, well, not really penalizing you. We're kind of upgrading everybody else around you a little bit more than you. So he, they're, they're, they've been going on a streak. Don't get us wrong. I mean, they're, they are getting it done. They're back into a nice playoff spot here. The four seed. They're on a five game or uh, one game losing streak, but eight and two in their last ten. So they are still getting it done. It's just unfortunately some teams are performing a little bit better than them at this current moment. So don't want to knock the Heat too much. We'll move them back one. Um, to number eight. Alrighty, new number seven team, and man, oh man, I'm super impressed by this team, and we put them at number 10 right before the All-Star break, and it was the best decision. We were deciding between Mavericks, Knicks, and the Wizards. We went with the Mavericks at the 10th seed right before the All-Star break, and it was the best decision we've made because the Knicks have been, you know, they, they, they're, they're, they're still good. They're still competing, but they're not beating the better teams quite yet. And uh, the Wizards, uh, they just went and beat the Jazz last night. Fantastic. But they're super up and down. It's really, I mean, they really, it all depends on what Bradley Beal and Russell Westbrook do on a nightly basis. Uh, so, well done to the Mavs. We move them up to the 7th seed now. I mean, just absolutely getting it done. Luka Doncic, Porzingis, Tim Hardaway Jr. off the bench, getting it done kind of on a nightly basis now. So, the Mavericks, um, in their, since the All-Star break, they beat the Spurs, the Nuggets, and the Clippers, and then they lost against the Thunder and the Clippers. So they split their season, their series against the Clippers. They won the last game against the Clippers, so you know the latest game against the Clippers. So I would say that's good. You took a, you took 
um, stuff away from that loss, and then you turned it around and ended up winning the next the next night. So very well done to the Mavs, beating you know some of these better teams, the Clippers, the Spurs. Um, and, um, the Nuggets, I mean, a great team in the Nuggets losing against the Thunder, not great. And then losing against the Clippers, like we said, I mean, if you're splitting season series, back to back series, you're beating these better teams, you know, that's what we're talking about. So very well done for the Mavs. I mean, they've been going on an absolute tear recently. Now they still have a lot of work to do, you know, seven and three in their last 10 and they're, you know, they're only number eight in the e in the West because they've kind of got out to a very, very slow start. So watch for this Mavericks team to start kind of start climbing a little bit more, but uh, they're, they're making a real great adjustment kind of the week before the all-star break, carrying it over here to kind of the week after the all-star break. So we'll see if they can keep it up. Definitely impressed with what they're doing. We'll uh, put them at number seven. Alrighty, new number six team, no longer the Bucks, and we are going to have to move back the Jazz a little bit. I don't know, man. They got to a really hot start, and maybe like the the week and a half before the All Star break, they started to flounder a little bit, and now after the All Star break, they're once again kind of floundering a little bit. So they played four games since the All Star break, went two and two, beat the Rockets. I mean, that's not a win. I can't even count that as a win. That is a non-factor team you're going against. I mean, you have a zero percent chance of losing against the Rockets. I mean, that's not a team. That's, I don't even know what that is. It's just some scrubs thrown together. Um, so, Rockets are absolutely trash. So they beat the Rockets and they beat the Celtics. Once again, not really great wins there. Celtics. Mm -hmm. Uh, we just moved them out of the top 10. So that's not even a top 10 win right there. And then their two losses against were the Wizards and the Warriors. Oh, my goodness. You cannot be losing against the Wizards. I don't care who you are. You cannot lose against the Wizards. Um, and then the Warriors, they just kind of caught them at the wrong time, I believe. I believe that was the game. Uh, was that the game before or after the Lakers where Steph Curry was pissed at everybody? Uh, but either way, I mean, Jazz are, have way too much talent to be losing to kind of these inferior teams. Um, uh, Jordan Clarkson, we just saw him not get it done against the Wizards last night. I mean, everybody in the starting lineup kind of got it done. But the thing about Rudy Gobert, and he is good, but really he's not like joking. He's not going to provide the 25 points a game. I mean, he's going to put up 12 to 15, and that's really it. And that's not a knock on him. He's still great out there. He brings the defense and the rebounding. But when we're looking at points, we know Jamal um, Donovan Mitchell, he can go for some, but he's kind of light on some other nights. So Jazz, they are good. They are a good team. But, man, some of these losses here, and I just feel like they kind of lost their magic, their allure a little bit, and they've kind of been floundering ever since that point when they were winning and kind of, you know, on like – um, were they on like a 20 game winning streak or something like that where they were like there was a 20 game stretch where they were just going wild like their record was just wild during that 20 game stretch but I feel like ever since that stretch has faded they've kind of like oh we we are beatable we're not kind of you know an unbeatable team here so I think they've kind of lost that magic a little bit I think everybody's kind of taken their play down just to peg a little bit here uh, so they're still a good team. They've got the talent. They got the roster. They got the depth. They got the bench. I mean, that's the one thing. They've got the players, but they all need to start playing a little bit more better here, especially Jordan Clarkson off the bench. I mean, you know, he's a sixth man of the year candidate and maybe the front runner, but um, these last couple of games here, not really getting it done uh, on a consistent basis. So we do have to j move the Jazz back a little bit here. Alrighty, new number five team. Got to give it up for this team, the Bucks. Now, they're not looking great in these wins, but they're finding ways to win. So, we got to give them credit here. So, 3-0 and oh in, uh, since the All-Star break, beating the, the Knicks, the Wizards twice. Or, so 4-0. Oh. Uh, the Knicks, the Wizards twice, and the 76ers. Just beat the 76ers without Joel Embiid, which shouldn't be that great of a win. But, once again, we're not going to penalize you for doing what you're supposed to do. And, also, they kind of came back. I mean, they were getting beat all game. Uh, Giannis wasn't being clutch at the free throw line in the, late in that fourth quarter. They went in in overtime. I'll give them a win there. So very well done for the Bucks for winning games. Now we see Chris Middleton not always stepping it up as the true number two during some of these games here since the All-Star break. So he's got to get it done. They've kind of been squeaking out some wins here, some close wins. Got to see the three be a little bit better. Got to start seeing some of these other kind of key pieces. Now they did just get Drew Holiday back, I think, right before the All-Star break. 
So he's kind of made a decent impact. But once again, I mean, we need Chris Middleton to really start to step it up. Dante DiVincenzo's got to be a lot more consistent. I'm seeing flaky games from him. Same thing with Brooke Lopez. And if they can get the three-point shooting back on track, this Bucks team can be good. But it's like good for one game and then just abysmal in other games. And nobody's really ever clutch here. But uh, I got to give him credit for four straight wins here after the All-Star break. Getting the job done. Beating the 76ers. I get Like, like I said, I get it. It was without Joel Embiid. Bead, but still at the end of the day you still have Ben Simmons down there you still have Tobias Harris you still have Dwight Howard who was doing pretty dang good over there so uh Bucks at five we'll see what they do not super sold on them I'm not betting them consistently but um you know they've been winning some of these games here so we will reward that Alrighty, new number four team. We are going to go the Denver Nuggets and they have been looking pretty dang good here since the all-star break Alrighty, so they are 3-1 and one in their last uh, four games since the All-Star break. They beat in the Grizzlies, the Pacers, and the Wizards, and lost to the Mavericks. Now, the Mavericks is not a great loss. Unfortunately, but um, I mean they've got the pieces Joe kick Murray and Michael Porter jr And plus they just got Paul Millsap back on you know good rotations back at the four Michael Porter jr Back at the three is making it work. So very well done for the Nuggets here able to move up a little bit I think I'm I, I just trust them a little bit more than the Bucks. That's why we're moving them up. Um, I think I trust them a little bit more right now than the Jazz. And we know the Nuggets are the Jazz true kryptonite. So that's why we had them above them here. Um, but very well done. Some solid wins there. The Grizzlies, the Pacers, those are solid wins. Uh, the Mavericks, I mean, definitely got to start beating that team. But uh, we know they are up and coming. So we're not going to penalize the Nuggets too much. Um. So, yeah, I mean, really, it's just uh, Michael Porter Jr. is having absolutely phenomenal success on this team these last kind of the week before the All-Star break and then continuing it here, moving from the four to the three, still having that same kind of production. And Jokic, I mean, he's handling every opponent that they bring to him. So for the Nuggets, we move them up to four. I think this is the highest they've been. Hopefully they can keep it up. A great team all around, decently deep as well. Um, but we'll see if they can kind of keep it up here. So Nuggets at four. Alrighty, top three now. Uh, the new number three team, unfortunately, takes a little bit of a step back here is the Suns. Now, they've kind of lost their little bit of magic as well. Um, I felt like, you know, right before the All-Star break, they felt like they were invincible. Then, you know, since the All-Star break, they went uh, two and two in their last four games. So, they have beaten the Blazers and the Grizzlies, but then lost against the Pacers and the Timberwolves. So really not decent teams to beat, Grizzlies and the Blazers, really kind of, you know, above average teams, solid teams. So some decent wins there, but then they'll lose against the Pacers and the Timberwolves, teams that they really shouldn't be losing against. But at the end of the day, the starting lineup is absolutely fantastic. Chris Paul, Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, Jay Crowder. Um, forgetting who they run at the three doesn't really make a difference. Um, but their bench needs to start stepping it up. And that's what was so good about the Suns team, like kind of leading up into the All-Star break when they went in that big run and secured that number two seed in the West right before the All-Star break, was that their bench was getting it done. Dario Saric and Cameron Payne and Cameron Johnson all having really kind of great nights on a nightly basis that we're helping out the starters a little bit because we don't have to question the Sun starters. That's not, that's everything is solid there kind of on a nightly basis, but that bench needs to be a little bit better. So we're going to drop the Suns back a little bit, but um, I mean, Chris Paul and Devin Booker are still getting it done with DeAndre Ayton. So they're usually winning all the games just because of their starting lineup, but if they can get their bench involved a little bit more, we're talking about a real, real dangerous team. So Suns will take a little bit of a step back this week. And then the 76ers, we are going to move them up to this number two seed right here. Um, and so let's just tell you what they've been doing since the All-Star break. They are 4-1, uh, and one, if you could believe that. Uh, they beat in the Bulls, the Wizards, the Spurs, and the Knicks, and then the loss against the Bucks. Now, those aren't great wins. Bulls, Wizards, Spurs, Kings, or Kings, or did I say Knicks? Mm, can't read my own handwriting, unfortunately. Um, that looks like... Uh, that looks like the Knicks to me. So, yeah, the Knicks. Uh, so, not really great wins. Not, you know, you know the Clippers or the Lakers or the Jazz or the Bucks or the Mavericks or anything like that. 
But um, once again, we're not going to penalize you for doing what you're supposed to do. And they're doing all this without Joel Embiid. So they're making it work without Joel Embiid. Absolutely fantastic. Dwight Howard's been absolutely great, uh, kind of filling up for his place. Ben Simmons is always great. Tobias Harris is great. It's just really Seth Curry and Danny Green are the ones that really aren't truly stepping it up on a nightly basis for the 76ers team. But it is still great sign seeing them win games consistently without Joel Embiid. If they can kind of, you know, continue out kind of winning on this pace of, you know, four wins and one losses when Joel Embiid out. I mean, if they can just kind of manage without him and then once they get him back, they're always great with him on the floor. So the 76ers winning without Joel Embiid I think is truly impressive and that's why we are moving them up a little bit here at the number two seed. And then the Nets will stay the number one seed 4-0 and since the All-Star break, beating the Pistons, the Knicks, the Celtics, and the... Raptors. So some great wins there. And then once again, you know, the Nets not having Kyrie Irving for one of those games. James Harden stepping up and still getting it done. James Harden being kind of the floor general, still getting it done without Kevin Durant. They're still deep. Joe Harris always great. Bruce Brown always great. DeAndre Jordan just kind of just being there, just being there. Nothing great, nothing bad, just kind of meh. But um, really, it's just James Harden here. MVP, I would say front runner at this point. Um, but yeah, I mean, this Nets team, they're deep. They're great. They can shoot the ball. It doesn't matter. Stop with this. The Nets don't play defense narrative what is this they're winning games can y'all relax on this there's uh james harden's hitting clutch shots uh, Kyrie irving's hitting ch clutch shots and if that's not working they still got joe harris no problem or bruce brown and then nicholas claxon starting to step it up i mean folks this team is truly deep so Nets stay at number one just because they're so gosh darn deep Alrighty, that is the new power rankings. We'll update this next Friday, but here we go. The new updated power rankings. Blazers at 10, Lakers at 9, Heat at 8, Mavericks at 7, Jazz at 6, Bucks at 5, Nuggets at 4, Suns at 3, 76ers at 2, and the Nets at 1. Uh.